Now you've progressed and let's move on to the Jazz Heritage Center, which is where you are right now. Can you tell us what the Jazz Heritage Center is and where it's located? I would like to think that I am able to tell you that. <laughs> Jazz Heritage Center is located at 1320 Fillmore Street in what is now known the revitalized Jazz District. Jazz Heritage District, and uh, Michael Johnson, a young African-American developer, was able to pull this project together when others have come before him, tried, and weren't as successful. He was able to get the money out of state to develop in what we call the Red Line District of the Fillmore, after redevelopment agency and urban removal and other elements kind of tore apart this district. It's at this particular lot where my, where my Lush Life Gallery is and the Jazz Heritage Center is located, was vacant lot for 30 years. 30 years? 30 years. Wow. And it's just ironic because my mom worked for the redevelopment agency and she was actually tasked with creating uh, concerts in the area known as the Living Legends Concerts. And uh, she did this for seven years to get the support of the community in Fillmore to see if they really wanted to have a revitalized jazz preservation district. And the outcome was uh, amazing and phenomenal. People lined up around the block yes. to see the concerts. Of course, yeah. you worked there. Yes. I worked there. I emceed yeah. them. Yeah. The concerts were free, but yes. people were They're truly excited. Fabulous. Yeah. And in some ways, uh, what your mother was doing was showcasing the artists, but also giving something back exactly. in terms of arts to the community. Right. So inside the Jazz Heritage Center, there is Yoshi's. So right. So Michael pulled the, these elements together. He got Yoshi's to come on board, uh, number two uh, renowned jazz club in America behind the Village Vanguard in New York, uh, a class act. Uh, he got uh, David Lawrence and Manetta Whites uh, to run uh, 1300, which is an elegant restaurant. And all these elements, including a public parking garage, 80 condominiums upstairs that were sold to, to help support this whole concept, uh, it put it all together and it became a, a beautiful package. And the element that I brought to the table was to blueprint the design of the Jazz Heritage Center, a nonprofit organization that's mission is to preserve and promote and present jazz, the history of jazz and the future of jazz. Mm -hmm. So we have an art gallery called the Lush Life Gallery, we have the Take Five gift shop, and we're just about to launch the incredible Harlem of the West exhibit, Harlem of the West Revisited, in our Corette Heritage Lobby space, which is the large entryway into Yoshi's. Wow. The gallery is really a retail center that we designed, hoping that it would help sustain the nonprofit. Meanwhile, I'm out there grant writing, I'm about, you know, looking for contributions, asking for support, because what we're doing is impacting the community in such a great way mm -hmm. to have an art gallery on the corner of Fillmore and Eddy Street and show images mm -hmm. and jazz imagery of the greats that came before us and and art in general okay. is an educational offering. So if I were to come into your space, what would I see? What what would the experience be for someone who wants to come see what the Jazz Heritage Center or the Lush Life Gallery was, was like? What would they see when they uh, uh, went into your space? Also, Lush Life Gallery, how did it get that name? The Lush Life Gallery, Michael and I sat down, he had an idea uh, kind of a tribute to Billy Strayhorn, who worked with Duke Ellington, and he wrote a book and a, and a song called Lush Life. It's made famous by, I believe, Billy Eckstein. Billy Holiday had a crack at it, and it's 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 more. And, and the book is fabulous, and it's more. It's a feeling. It's an it's an inherent. It's like jazz. Yes. I don't even know how to explain it. Mm -hmm. So the Lush Life seemed like the perfect name mm -hmm. for an art gallery where we would try to concentrate on the niche art uh, of jazz related art themes, mm -hmm. including sculpture, photography is very big with us. We, uh, My first task as the director of the Jazz Heritage Center was to pull together a national photo contest and get content, which now is in the seven art panels, 10 feet by 10 feet panels on the outside of the building that feature legends of jazz, the either greats. the greats, either mm -hmm. the residential legends mm -hmm. like Vernon Alley and John mm -hmm. Handy and Mary mm -hmm. Stallings, mm -hmm. and my dad, F. Allen Smith. Mm -hmm and Duke Ellington and all the nationally known guys. Mm -hmm. And they're out there on the building. So kids are walking by, they look up, they see a, a person of color yeah. that's done something with their lives, that's created you know, some fame and fortune behind music. Mm -hmm. It's a role model opportunity. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So 
Um, what's being exhibited right now? What's your feature? So I was going to say, if you come to the Lush Life Gallery, if you come today, it's going to be different than if you come three weeks from now because the gallery art changes. Currently we have an amazing uh, show called Cuban Rhythms by a artist from Havana. And it was brought to me because people wanted, uh, the, the agent, his agent came to me and said, I'd love to show in your gallery. You have an elegant gallery. And can we make that happen? And I saw the man's art, Mario Ayar, uh, Ira, sorry, Mario Ira mm -hmm. of, of Havana. And so you go there now and the whole gallery is just full of these beautiful paintings of jazz scenes and, and street scenes in Havana mm -hmm. and musicians of all shades and colors playing and, and showing that exuberance that you know happens with people in Cuba. Mm -hmm. So then two weeks from now we open up Harlem of the West, primarily a photographic exhibit in the lobby, but we'll have support materials in the gallery, such as a very famous painting by Joe Overstreet of the exterior of Bob City, done back in the days, back in the 50s, when Bob City was this, you know, this incredible place. Now you mentioned Harlem of the West. Where does that term come from and what does it mean? Now Harlem of the West, the story behind that is uh, the authors of the book, Harlem of the West, Elizabeth Pepin and Lewis Watts, salvaged photographs that were about to be Cost uh, during the again the urban removal days in the Fillmore, they they were they lucked upon some incredible images, and these images tell a very important story of the Fillmore, the golden era of jazz in the Fillmore, and all the jazz clubs that existed, all 20, 30 of them, in this little area known as the Fillmore District. Mm -hmm. So they put together a book called Harlem of the West and an exhibit followed that went to the Performing Arts Library and Museum. And this is about two years ago. Now our opportunity to bring it home into the Fillmore where this, these photos were taken by great photographers, David Johnson and others, is, is, an, is a dream come true, and mm -hmm. it's where it should be. Right, it's We invite home. you all down December 6th for the Community Day Grand Opening. Now, is it going to be housed there for a certain period of time, or will it live there? It will be housed there temporarily because it will actually continue to, to, to travel. Oh, wow. So we have Harlem of the West there through Black History Month, through okay. February mm -hmm. 09. All right. And then who's coming? And then we have Jazz Ambassadors. I'll just leak it all out because we have... And exhibits that are traveling the country, and this one will come to us from Lincoln Center in New York City. And I thought there was a local jazz artist, who, I mean, a local painter who is going to be there at some point. We also have, we also, I do simultaneous exhibits. Okay. All so right. the gallery will also house Ron L. Roberts, that's what I'm saying. a local, local, artist, local artist, a man of color who, yeah. who teaches art. I will eventually get him into our programs because we want to do youth jazz and art where kids can learn about jazz and art appreciation as well as art application. You just said learn about jazz. I have a question. In terms of when people come to see the art at the gallery, what will it say about African Americans? It says a lot. It tells a, a story. Whether it's a struggle or if it's, if it's a moment of being proud, we're going into a new era. Obama's the man. He's in. We could all relax a little bit, but yet we have so much work to do. You go into my gallery and you see people of color. You see, you see yourself in a painting. It gives you inspiration. It gives you hope. It gives you imagination. It gives you a sense of being somebody. Tell us in a few words why you think people should not miss coming to Jazz Heritage Center. Well, ultimately we want to make this such a compelling experience, a destination, so that you could go down to the Fillmore District. It's beautiful, things are happening, there's an energy going over there, and we want you to come down and participate in our screening room that we're about to build. Tell where us you about could, that. We're yeah. about to build a 35-seat mini theater mm -hmm. where we will be able to present movies about jazz, history about jazz, uh, the legend of Bob City, and also bring in musicians to talk and speak and lecture and oral history collect in this screen slash presentation room. So that's coming in 09. We're hoping to open those doors soon. So a lot of good things have happened, are happening, and will happen. And we produce the Living Legends concerts in my mom's honor. We continue to bring them back and let them, uh, you know, share their music with the community. We've had Peter Fitzsimmons here, who is the executive director of the Jazz Heritage Center here in San Francisco, over in the Fillmore District. Thank you very much for joining us here with Afro Soul Live. Join us again on the first and third Fridays of the month.